when uh, when Dr. Larry Horner asked me to, in a sense, head up this project some four years ago, I had originally declined. And then with some encouragement from my wife, Lois, uh, much to her regret in later years when I was <laughs> gone all the time, and the things in the farm went uh, slowly to pot. Um, but upon her encouragement, I, she said, are you going to work for yourself the rest of your life? And I said, okay, honey. And so, but the, the interesting thing is that, of course, a project like this never, never happens alone. And uh, so many have uh, become involved in so many different ways. And um, I'd, like to, I'd like to spend just uh, a few minutes uh, r telling you about some of the people that have really contributed uh, to make this thing um, uh, to the place where it is today. It's not that Prairie Arboretum is finished. You see mounds of dirt spread here and there for flowers. And uh, the amphitheater, which you'll see once you go up in the uh, gazebo, is, needs to be finished. The flowers need to be planted in these, in these squares. Um, there's a lot to be done, but there's a lot that has been done. And certainly, certainly it's open for, for you to, to walk the paths, to sit and enjoy, and to, walk, and to watch the continued progress as, as we continue to work here in, in future years. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention uh, James Unruh. I believe he's here. James, where are you? Back there. James was um, as in, uh, worked as an engineer in Minnesota and is continuing to do so today. And he did some of the initial survey work in the pond area and oversaw the new soccer field construction. Um, also, he did the very extensive paperwork for the Army Corps of en Engineers permit which held up our excavation process for, for a while. Uh, Doyle Becker Construction, I don't see Doyle here. Uh, we want to recognize him for the, uh, the excellent job he's done on the, on the, lands, on the, the earthwork uh, for the pond area. I think probably what is unique about this, this arboretum is the extensive area of pond. In a, in, a, in a community or in an area of the state where we often are watching for water, I think for rain, I think water draws people, and I think um, I think it'll be enjoyed because of the water primarily, as well as other things. Um, Gary Nostrop, I don't believe he's here. He's Gary. Are you here? Gary was one of the first people to donate his heavy equipment uh, for um, doing backhoe work for the initial holes, small holes, which we used to dewater this area before we could dig. That was a major, let me just tell you a little something I, uh, I heard recently, and I mentioned this to Tim. T.S. Eliot said, between the vision and the reality comes the shadow. And I think we all know what that means. Uh, but th that shadow shouldn't stop us because once we can get beyond the shadow, then comes the reality. And I think we experience that at Prairie, Ar Prairie Arboretum primarily because of the vast amounts of water which we had buried in the, in the, in the, land, in the, uh, in the lake area. So we had to dewater the ground before we could have the he heavy equipment come in. Once that was accomplished, that took us almost three years. Once that was accomplished, then we could move ahead with the major construction and then the walking paths and everything else. Uh, Kerner Construction, Randy, um, they, they also did back work for us and hauled a lot of gravel for the walking paths. Um, Keith Waltner, I believe he's here. Um, we, he, he helped us uh, move out. In a sense, we had uh, two large rock piles, which he moved out of the lo their location because rock piles typically that were through the, uh, lived through the 30s or were in existence through the 30s had a lot of soil blown in. And so he moved them with his large pail loader. And then Barry Pre moved them out onto a flat ground. And then Barry Preheim, who's here, Barry, raise your hand. Barry Preheim loaded up approximately 300 tons of rock with his loader. And that rock was all laid out by hand, one rock at a time, by a crew of volunteers in about three days. Uh, we, each rock was handled at least twice. We're looking at perhaps a million pounds of rock. So the rock is there to protect the shoreline from water erosion. So very important help to get the rock work done. Um, Lauren Cheddar has donated the use of his skid loader 
and you probably saw it back at the church, which we've used here at the school and at the Arboretum for years. Um, a very valuable tool, tool when you're working with, with dirt work. Um, some of the, I see we have Bob and Rachel Center here in the front row. Bob and Rachel were the first large donors for uh, the pond excavation. We relied on a number of large donors to help with the total cost of the pond excavation, which was very significant. I don't see any other donors here at the time. Um, I want to mention there have been some significant tree collections which have been donated to Prairie Arboretum. Kirk and Anita Preheim, which I don't believe are here, have donated a significant collection. Bob and Cleva Waltner, Clarence and Critic, Critic Graber, and most recently, Johnny Graber donated uh, three trees in memory of his wife, Catherine. Larry, um, Laverne Graber, he's here. Laverne, where are you? Oh, all right, Laverne. Laverne has helped, been helping out with mowing, a job that continues to go on and on for, for, especially if it's wet. This summer it got a little bit less for a while, but thank goodness it's greened up. And Larry Cheddar, Larry, are you here? I know he was at the uh, Menno Power Show, Larry. Uh, Larry has, is the, uh, the primary mower, mower of this area. And Larry was all instrumental in basically single-handedly -handed, putting in, uh, putting in 5,500 feet of walking path. And I, I think we should give Larry a hand right now because that was a major feat. Uh, Rural Manufacturing uh, donated their scraper, which was used significantly in the process of creating the walking paths. And if you're interested, talk to Larry about how he got that done. So, pretty amazing job. Dwayne Graber did the tilling in preparation for excavating the soil out of the walking path before the gravel was placed in it. And we want to recognize that as well. Uh, I, I want to say, too, I appreciate my parents, Otto and Siglinder, are here. Uh, they've been supportive in so many ways over the years. So uh, that has meant, uh, that's meant a great deal to me. Last and certainly not least is Mark Schrag, who we call our technical engineer. He's back there. Mark, would you come on ahead? Come on over here, Mark. Uh, of any person that has uh, been helpful as we've dealt with some of the technical difficulties having to do with voltage drop over a series of a thousand feet to uh, the bridge construction, it's Mark. And I want to say thanks, Mark. Mark is usually here when I'm here. Uh, sometimes there are others, but there's usually Mark is here for sure. And so without Mark, uh, we would have been in, in deep trouble. So thanks, Mark. Thank you. All right. The most recent donor has been uh, Dawn Stahl, and um, she has donated the gazebo, which is a significant point in Prairie Arboretum, and I'd like to invite Dawn Stahl to come forward at this point and share some, uh, some thoughts with you. <laughs> 